Hello and welcome to the statistical expedition that we are going to take today. Now, we know some ways to represent data graphically, isn't it? So, what are we waiting for? Let us quickly revisit those techniques and then move ahead, all right? So, our first way of representation is bar graph. Bar graph is also called a bar chart and is a graphical display of data using bars of different lengths. This is a bar graph and it shows daily production of TV sets by the production unit of a TV company. Now, just by using this graph, one can answer various questions pertaining to the TV production. We can easily find on what day maximum production takes place and what day it is the least. So we can easily see that the production was highest on Tuesday and lowest on Friday. Now, can you tell me how many TV sets were produced on Wednesday? Yes, absolutely correct. It is indeed 200. And so in this way, a variety of data can be represented on a bar graph. Now let us look at another form. This is a form of depicting data and is called the double bar graph. Double bar graphs, also called double bar charts, help us to compare or present more than one kind of information, situations or events instead of just one. This diagram of a double bar graph compares interests in various sports on a camp amongst boys and girls. Now, we see that boys and girls are equally interested in swimming, but fewer boys are interested in crafts than girls. Now, another thing this graph encapsulates is the total number of students that are on the camping trip. Here, we can assume that each student can choose only one activity. So, we can get the total number of students as 30 plus 25 plus 35 plus 35 plus 15 plus 20 plus 10 plus 5. This gives us a total of 175 students. So this is how we can get data as well as compare data in the same graph. Let us look at another form of graphical representation. A line graph displays data that changes continuously over periods of time. Let us consider this example. The horizontal line or the x-axis represents the days and the vertical line or the y-axis represents the number of push-ups done by a person. So basically this graph represents the number of push-ups done by a person in a week. So the push-ups are random but by representing it graphically we have created a pattern for the same. Isn't that wonderful? Now, what all do you think can be gathered from this graph? I can see a few things. Let me note them down for you. One, it gives me push-ups counts on a daily basis. Two, it tells me that maximum push-ups are 25 and it also tells me that those were made on Sunday and Tuesday. It also tells me that on Friday, the person did not do any push-ups. Now, if I ask you whether the person was able to do more than 25 push-ups, then by looking at the graph, you can immediately answer no. So, from a graph like this, we are able to answer many questions that pertain to the periodic data of any entity. Wow, this graph reading is turning out to be fun. So, let's move on to the next graph then. The graph looks like this. It gives the sale of food and drinks over a period of five days. So, here we have two line graphs within the same graph. Let us see what the questions that are being thrown at us are. The first one asks, how much was the sale of food on Monday? Let us trace it for Monday then. And we see that the sale was 400 rupees. Now, the next question asks us, find out on which days was the food sale higher than the drink sale? From the graph, it is clear that the sale of food was higher than drinks on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay, let's see the next one. On which day was the sale of drinks the lowest? Let us follow the drinks line and we see the sale was lowest on Wednesday. The next question asks us to find the total sale of food and drinks on Thursday. Now, the sale of food on Thursday is 300 rupees and that of drinks is 400 rupees. So there is a total sale of rupees 700. And now one final question on this graph. Can you tell me out of food and drinks, 
which sale shows a steadier trend. As we can see from the graph, the sale of drinks jumps from a low to a high by a large margin on a daily basis. Whereas the sale of food is quite consistent around the 300 to 500 mark. Hence, we can confirm that the food sale is steady. It's fascinating, isn't it? The amount of information that you can get from a single line is quite amazing. And with this, we come to an end of reading graph and gathering information from it. In the next video, we will learn how to plot a graph based on information given. And so, I will see you very soon. Bye-bye. Tutormate. For more amazing videos, download the free app on Apple App Store and Google Play Store.